Okay guys, so it's Mental Health Awareness Week and I'm here with Guy Thompson and Rain Smith. And I thought it'd be really good for us to sit down with my role as Player Development Manager at the club and talk around the uh, potential stigma um, aligned with such a topic, um, but also it's particularly off the back of COVID and lockdown, how it's impacted any players within the club, um, the environment, etc., and how we're working to address it, educate, etc., around the area. Okay, so uh, Rain, in your role as captain, do you think uh, the players, the club itself dealt well through COVID um, with regards to lockdown and potentially having our usual regimes and structured schedules and everything interrupted? Do you think there was more we could have done? Um, yeah, just give me your opinion on that, please. Yeah, so, well, first of all, at the beginning when it all happened, we obviously had the Leeds game cancelled and that was pretty much bang on in the middle of our season. Um, Leeds game got cancelled. I think it's the first game I've ever had cancelled in my life in rugby. So there was a lot of uncertainty. And then obviously we hear about a pandemic going around. And then like the next week we've come in for, for training. Training's been cancelled. Then all of a sudden we're on our own. And then, I mean, there was a time where travel was just literally dead. And obviously with Mike Gooley being in travel, there was a lot of uncertainty from the players. And then we obviously had to go on furlough. But then, I mean, thanks to Mike Gooley and, and, and obviously Wardy, they did everything they could to get us back. And I think if you look at the other clubs, we were really lucky to come in, I think, back end of June, whereas most clubs probably started looking at October, November to come back in. So we were really lucky in that regard. Um, I think it was ge generally the uncertainty of us not having a structure that was quite tough to deal with. Players, you know, if you look at the programme, we're probably set up from Monday to Saturday and then Sundays are, are ours. The rest is all just sort of given to us. So I think the lack of routine was probably something that a lot of players struggled with and my role as captain I, I you know I was pretty uncertain myself but it's just trying to, it's trying to be reassuring without knowing actually what's going on but like I said thanks to thanks to Gooley and Wardy they, they tried everything they could to get us back in as soon as possible. Absolutely I think particularly as professional sportsmen when you've got that routine and that structure kind of put on a plate for you and it's something to follow losing that and having to adapt to having your own time and potentially as well, obviously in lockdown, not having the access to your usual uh, conversations, resources, etc. What kind of things did the guys come up with or you individually to occupy yourselves and to uh, stay focused and obviously motivated to get him back to hopefully the rugby season? Yeah, Rain touched on it then about having routine, about how we're really, really lucky to, to have things given to us and structured to us on a week by week and a day to day basis. Um, that kind of carried on I think to a lot of uh, to a lot of people within their personal lives as well so it's okay for us we're able to come to work we're able to focus on something but what were boys doing away from the club I, I've done a little piece on this previously with loose heads about the importance of routine within your daily life and about giving you a reason to get up in the morning or about giving you a reason to not worry about something that you can't control so you had to give yourself small wins you had to give yourself little goals in order for you to achieve something so it kept you on a positive route during this lockdown during this isolation periods um, a lot of the boys here have been really really good in that they've looked at we've got people like kieran murphy steve shingler and, and westy they've looked at their financial advisor qualifications they're all looking their certificates they've all passed and sat exams previously myself i'm almost finishing my masters now i've used the time to catch up uh, on assignments reports that I didn't have time previously to do and, and Rain here himself as well has started one towards the end of lockdown as well. So we, we've had a lot of people within this community that we call ourselves here at Ealing, this, this family that we have here that we've given ourselves routines, we've given ourselves targets, we've given ourselves goals to focus on away from, from the job. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we're very thankful to the club that has actually provided and, and guided us through this really tough time at the moment that they've just given us something to focus on and give us something to achieve to keep us moving forwards. Excellent. How did um, either of you or anyone you know about match that physical side to the routine? Because obviously we all know about the uh, the benefits of uh, physical um, activity and how that improves your mental health and well-being. And obviously losing that and losing access to gyms and everything was a big thing during COVID. So did any of you uh, come up with something a bit different? Uh, well, with, with gyms closed, it was, it was loads of walks, really. Um, I think the initial lockdown we were allowed out once. I don't know how many actually stuck to that, so I can't tell you how many walks we went on. I'm actually getting bored of it. Did you buy a new companion to help and you then, with those yeah, walks, Rain? Right? Dog <laughs> managed to get a dog, um, which sort of kept us busy. Obviously, um, with the wife at home, it's it's tough for her. She, we, we were quite lucky when we came in. We still, you know, we had a sense of normality. 
for most of the partners back at home, I mean, the, the whole world is basically flipped and, and, and all the work went, went home based. And I think the whole world being at home is, is probably tough to deal with and you maybe find it overwhelming at times. So I thought it was the best time to have a to have a dog, and that you know took care of, of of activities that we could we could actually go for really long walks. So um, that was a great buy-in for us. <laughs> Definitely. Okay, so we were really lucky. Obviously, you guys came back to training quite early compared to some clubs, so that was obviously a great result for you guys. Um, and just moving into that and the rugby environment, and then obviously mental health. What do you think, as players, um, can be some of potentially the triggers or the reasons behind? Um, creating mental health uh, problems potentially within these professional sporting environments yeah so there's, there's a huge amount um from the outset first and foremost you know you you get this image of what a rugby and a rugby player is about you you have this big provada you have this big tough exterior that people think you are what is actually really important to highlight is so many of these rugby players at the moment uh, men and women are going through periods just like everybody else they are struggling inside of a rugby environment you know it's things that you don't even think about from the outside you know things like team selection people get anxious about that people start feeling anxiety and worries about are they going to play are they not going to play you get people get nervous about playing games mm. um you you see boys have their traditions you have their superstitions before they come out before they play because they have to manifest their anxiety or their nerves into something physical in order for them to achieve what they want to achieve when they go out and kind of switch off and i think to an extent just just this mental uh, illness and it is an illness this mental issue at the moment as well is people just need to understand that everybody's in the same boat and all the sort of the social media side of things people need to understand that what people post aren't real all the time it's only the best bits of what they want to show what goes on there's a lot of things that go on behind closed doors there's a lot of people that are having issues at the moment whether they're professional rugby or whether they're normal people the most important thing to remember at the moment for everybody is just to one raise awareness and to let everyone understand that if you're not okay that it's okay to speak out and it's okay to ask for help yeah that's definitely a true reflection of i think particularly how this club works a lot of you can see the encouragement for people to talk to each other the downtime opportunities to actually just sit around a table and just have a chat um, and potentially encourage those people to speak up if they need the support i think definitely with my role coming in is a great opportunity again for that to be pushed further um, and to actually show that the club cares about the players and they want to support them off field and i think it's great that um, players are starting to recognize those opportunities Rain, do you think there's potentially um, a bit more that we could be doing within these kind of environments to help obviously encourage those people to seek that support um, and to talk about it, but also potentially preventative measures? So do you know what I mean? The education around um, mental health, but the impact of stress on like uh, your body, your brain, etc., and how we can actually prevent mental health issues coming about in the first place? Yeah, I think, um, I think guys touched on a really good point there. It's, it's sometimes, especially... South African rugby players, it's very macho centric society where, you know, everything's fine. It's just rugby, rugby, rugby. And, and you know, how many times you ask someone how they are, you're just going to hear, I'm good. Thank you. Yeah. That's pretty much it is, is how do you, how do you force those conversations? Not, well, not force, but how do you get people to, to a point where they feel like, am I okay? Am I good? Um, obviously in, in a rugby environment, there's a lot of, a lot of banter. There's a huge amount of banter coming from South Africa. Again, I've, I've it's it's pretty much centered around banter. It's just all the conversations that we hear is uh, how many real conversations are we actually having? You know, when we're having a meal, are you talking about something that actually means something or are we just climbing into each other all the time? And that's something that I have I think is a bit different that I've found in this country, but I don't know, you know, if that's something we can actively target or is, you know, who does have the answer to that is for me, you know, if we can have more of those, those you know, deep conversations, but it's not really deep. If we make that more normal, then mm. you know, do, do people feel more comfortable talking about something? And if they are, you know, if something is bothering them and we're having a good deep conversation, would they feel more comfortable maybe saying it then? Absolutely. I think it, we need to look at changing that mindset about having those conversations, particularly between potentially the males um, within professional sport, because I know coming from my sporting background, women are a lot more comfortable talking about everything and anything to each other um, and within more open circles and I think it's trying to encourage um, everybody to do the same and for it like you said for it to become a normality um, as opposed to something that's awkward or difficult um, to potentially access. Yeah just, just just kind of agreeing with you both though as well like Rain's point about trying to make it more normal and normalize it and then you mentioned some about the re-education side of things and trying to make it sort of available for players I think 
some of the onus has to fall on the players themselves. Um, you have to understand your own way of thinking that you have to be comfortable in your environment in order to then be able to speak out. But in order for you to have that strength, you have to understand the areas around it and what might make you feel up. Like. You might be anxious, you might be struggling with your mental health without actually knowing. You mm. might just be a little bit quieter. You might just feel that you don't want to participate in something with the team that you normally have done. And it might take somebody else that knows your character to actually give you a little bit of a nudge and just ask you, are you okay? That's the really important bit that Rain mentioned that nine times out of 10, most players here will go, yeah, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. But are you really? Mm. Um, I know there's been campaigns out there that are you really okay? Are you okay? Like constantly asking that question to get boys to open up and get boys to, or, or the men around these, these sort of teams is to get them to actually say how they feel. But without having that re-educational side of things or without letting them know that it's okay, then they're not going to do that. So that's where your role comes in massively as this player development manager. You're not just looking at careers post-rugby. Mm -hmm. You're looking at how to improve players here to improve themselves as a whole before they move on or before they take their best foot on the field. And, and it goes in that whole aspect of that area. Definitely. And I'm really excited to have that opportunity. I think it's a great buy-in from the club. It speaks volumes about what they're trying to do. Um, and thank you to both of you for taking time out of your day to actually talk about this. It's great to have an ambassador like yourself from Looseheads and then Rainer's captain to show how important this topic is to the club and how we are um, putting things in place to help obviously minimise the impact of it on performance and on people and wellbeing.